Welcome to Biology 3406, Developmental Mechanisms. I'm your instructor, Dr. Matthew Terry. Uh, this course is de delivered online in an asynchronous manner, meaning that you can interact with the material at any time of the day, whatever is convenient for your schedule. Uh, because of that, all of the material will be on Blackboard, either posted on Blackboard or links through Blackboard where you can access the material. Um, and this will be especially important for the lab, which we'll talk about in more detail in a coming couple of weeks. The lab is uh, transitioning from a wet work molecular biology lab to bioinformatics uh, uh, analysis and organization and assembly of transcriptomes. Um, so there will be some changes there, and I am developing both most of the lecture and all of the labs for delivery online for the first time. So I'll be doing that throughout the semester and posting material uh, week to week as we go. Um, so just be aware of that. We'll look at the calendar and, and all the material here. So uh, you have a list of all your courses on Blackboard. Hopefully you're already very familiar with it, but when you click on the link to mine, you will have a menu along the left-hand side here of all the important elements of the course. So we'll look at these in turn. Let's look at the syllabus and calendar first. So syllabus is essentially like a contract between the student and the professor and explains how the course will work. Um, is online asynchronous. There is a textbook for this course. It's not your classical textbook. It's a little bit old, but it's really the best one we have for Evo Devo. Um, I always have students ask if they absolutely need the textbook. It is, I think, about $40, $50. It's a little bit pricey. I guess that's the way textbooks go. But uh, my answer is that, yeah, it's, it's really an important resource. You'll learn a lot from it. Uh, it's really well written and accessible. It's not like really dense and thick like some science textbooks can be, so it's good in that manner. So I highly recommend it. With that said, all of the material on exams, um, quizzes, uh, will be presented through the online lectures and other material that you access. So we will go over all of it, but the textbook really will be a good way to prepare, help you get used to the material, and then go back and, and, and review. Uh, my office hours contact information are here. Uh, I will be doing office hours digitally. I'm not on campus as much as I have been in previous semesters because of the pandemic. This is your, oops, sorry, your very best way to get in touch with me. Let me get back to where we were. Very best way to get in touch with me if you need to, to um, communicate with me is by email. Okay, but uh, I will every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday have an office hour from 9.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the morning. I will be on Zoom. You can access it via this link. And then that's just an office hour. These are not required. You don't have to be there. But if you have questions, if you want to talk about the class, if you want to just, you know, as long as we don't have other students who are going over biology, I'm happy to, to go over, talk about whatever you want. That's just an open office hour. So please utilize those. If that does not work for your schedule, if you can't make those meetings, you can also email me and we can set up an appointment to talk if we need to do things in more detail. I'll let you read through the course objectives. This is Evo Devo. You've probably had a very little bit of it, particularly if you've had the evolution class, but we're going to spend the entire semester going over it. Uh, the laboratory section, um, I will, just for simplicity's sake, we will not have a separate um, page for the labs. So uh, you don't have a, a s different Blackboard page for labs just for simplicity. I'll post everything in the labs folder, but again, I'm still developing those. The first one's not until, I think, the third or fourth week. So um, you have a little bit of time. That will give me some time to begin to flesh these out and develop them. But you, uh, it doesn't matter which laboratory section you're uh, enrolled in. They're all going to be the same. And I will um, go over that in coming weeks. Okay. There are four other elements of the, uh, I'm sorry, just three other elements other than the laboratory uh, of this class upon which you will be assessed and graded. There are exams. There are three midterms and a final exam. These are all administered online. Now, there are some fairly strict, somewhat, I think, draconian rules uh, or pieces of software and other technology for online exams. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to those. I have decided not to use those. So you don't have, like, lockout or all of the other ones that can pose some technical um, access issues and, and other things. So. You will have online exams. Um, you can use whatever resources you want while you're doing that, except please do not collaborate with one another. These are not uh, do them as a group, get on um, uh, uh, 
uh, WhatsApp and, and you know go over them. And to that extent, there are some things in, in, in place that will limit your ability to, I guess, that you know cheat. That would be cheating as if you're collaborating and helping one another on exam. But you're welcome to use notes. You're welcome to go back and, and access videos or, or look up things on the internet for the, during those exams. However, there is a time limit of 90 minutes. There are only 50 questions, so it's ample time to finish a multiple choice exam, unless, of course, if you're trying to look up every single thing and go through notes. So you really need to come prepared as you would for other exams so that you can finish it within that time limit. Okay, it still is very uh, ample time. Most students finish in about half to three quarters of that time. In addition, there is no backtracking. So once you've answered a question, you won't be back, be able to go back over and modify it. And again, that limits the ability for students to cheat on the exam to some extent. And then finally, uh, all of the questions will be drawn from pools of questions. So although all students will get an equivalent exam, no two students will get the exact same exam. They'll get different um, random draws from those pools of questions, but still only 50 questions per student. The final exam will be comprehensive. So it will be composed of all of the material over the entire course of the semester. However, it is also pool, pulled from those same pools of questions. So about half on average of the questions on your final exam will be the exact questions that you saw in previous exams. And once an exam is finished, you'll be able to review those and go over and see which ones you missed and what the correct answer was uh, by accessing them in the My Grade section of Blackboard. So you should be able to do fairly well on the exam, especially if you've learned the material. Those, you know, half you should be just gimme, and the other halves will be um, questions that are similar over material that you should have learned throughout the semester. Uh, dates for the final exam are here. We'll talk more about that, and I'll remind you through announcements on Blackboard as we get closer. So at the end of the semester, I will count all of your exams. I do not drop an exam, so you need to make sure that you're aware and, and taking all of them. There's ample time and lots of flexibility because of the online mode of this course. The next section is quizzes. Uh, so unless there's an exam during the week, there will be a quiz each week, and I think we have 12 or so in total. We'll look at the calendar in a little bit. Quizzes will also be administered through Blackboard. They're much the same as exams, except shorter. You'll only have five questions on each quiz. You'll have a half an hour, so lots and lots of time. You can use notes. You can look them up. So really, it's just to kind of make sure you're keeping up with the material. You should be able to do quite well on those um, quizzes. Uh, and ma just make sure you take each one. If you miss one, it's not going to impact your grade. I will, at the end of the semester, drop the lowest quiz score from the quiz total when I am calculating your grade. Okay. Uh, answer keys for each quiz will be posted. They're actually posted on Blackboard, again, through the My Grades. You can just look them up. So if you take all the quizzes, that's to your advantage. Then if you just don't do very well on one or get a, a, a poor score on one, that will be dropped from your final quiz portion. The final uh, component, other than the lab, for the course are reading assignments. And these are basically participation points. You will, you will get full credit for them. But it is to your advantage to spend enough time to make sure you're doing them correctly. So every day there is a non-textbook reading assignment. Each week there, and almost I think every day for the course, um, there is a short reading assignment from the textbook. But on some days there's an additional reading assignment from the scientific literature. Some of them are review articles. Some of them are primary research articles. For each of those, I will post two or three questions that you will need to answer. These are short answer, and by short answer I mean a couple sentences, maybe a very, very short paragraph. Um, and as long as you are engaging with the material and, and honestly trying and not just putting random um, text, you will get full credit for those when, if you turn them in on time. Okay? Uh, the first one's not until week two, and I will um, post a reminder of it on Blackboard also. But it's worth your time to engage, make sure you've read the material, you understand it, and you, you provide a reasonable answer because many of those um, open-ended uh, reading questions will appear as multiple choice questions on the exam. So if you don't go over the material, then you're going to kind of be in the dark when you see that question again and a series of multiple choice answers for that question on the exam. So it's really worth your time to do these both for the free points, for just submitting them on time, and also because they'll help you prepare for some of the questions on the exam. So at the end of the semester, I will assess your grade using the following uh, scale. 
exams are 60% of your overall grade. So if you want to, you can think of it as 60 out of 100 points possible for exams. So if you get a 95 average on all of your exams, you'll get 95% of those 60 points. And then the same thing for quizzes after dropping the lowest one was 10% of your overall grade. Reading questions are 10%. And then the lab, which will be composed of several components, uh, the lab will be 20% of your overall grade. I will provide a separate short syllabus for the lab. I'm still working on developing that, but I'll provide that before our first lab so you can figure out how that lab will be assessed. At the end of the semester, I'll average all of these up, add them together, and you have to achieve at least a 90% to get an A, okay? So if you have an 89.9%, that's still a B. No matter where I draw the lines, some students are gonna fall just short of the next grade up. So whether it's an 89.4 and I don't round up, or an 89.9 and I don't round up, there are always gonna be a few students that are there. So to be fair, I just set the standards and I stick to them. There's no extra credit. Your, exam or your grade is a measure of your performance throughout the semester, both how well you learn and respond to the material and how well you keep up. It's not a make a bargain at the end of the semester and see if we can bump it up. So you must achieve at least a 90 if you want an A, an 80 for a B, and so on. Again, because it's an online class, you can interact with the material whenever you want to, but there are still our deadlines. So basically think of it, oh, I can do it at different days. Now I've set up the calendar on as if it was a Tuesday, Thursday class. There's something to do every Tuesday, there's something to do every Thursday, and I'm making sure the material is present for those days. I'm just gonna try and get a little bit ahead of schedule so you can do it a little bit earlier if you want to. Many things you can even do a little bit later, but keep an eye on the deadlines. But you do not want to fall behind. You don't learn effectively if you're trying to cram everything in on you know one or two days. Um, even if it's, you still can get it in before the deadline, if you're doing you know, two or three units on a single day, it's no, no fun for you and you don't learn very well. I would also highly recommend that you treat it kind of like a regular class. So when you're watching the lectures, take notes, write down things, ask questions, you know, write a question and say, oh, I need to go into the textbook or I need to go back over that or I need to log on to an office hour and ask Dr. Terry about that. Uh, lots of research has shown that the very act of taking notes helps you to assimilate and learn the information better. So if you just sit there and passively listen to the lecture, you'll learn a little bit. If you sit there and actively engage and take notes and go back over the notes later, you will learn two, three, four times as effectively. So please, I know it's, it's easy to just kind of sit down and veg out and watch a video, but please interact. Uh, be an active participant. Um, also, take advantage of the office hours. Not all students do that, and that's fine. If you're okay and you're learning and feel comfortable with the material, that's fine. But take advantage of these. Make an appointment if you do not, um, if your schedule doesn't allow you to interact with those office hours. This last component of the syllabus is there for students who need it. You might not need it and look at it and say, oh, that doesn't apply to me. Great. But it might at some point. Uh, occasionally, things come up, accidents, health, health issues. If that does come up, you need to go through the proper channels. So let me know as soon as possible. Uh, if it rises to the level of needing assistance, we'll put you in contact, you can, or you can contact them directly. But the Student Accessibility Services, they have tons of resources. They do a really, really good job to uh, make accommodations when necessary. So that information is there if you need it. Okay, so let's look at the other elements of the course. The calendar is listed also on this page. It's just simply a PDF. We'll go through each of the different elements. And again, it's designed kind of on a Tuesday, Thursday, but you can interact as soon as the material is posted. You can interact with this one you want. So today we're doing Unit 1.1. Part of that is the introduction. I'll show you that here in just a, a little bit of where you can access that material. So we've got each day, Tuesday, Thursday schedule. The quizzes you have to do by the end of the day on Friday. So anytime there's a deadline here, you'll see the deadline for exams, for quizzes, for reading questions, for when labs need to be turned in. Those deadlines refer to the end of the day. As long as you get them completed by midnight on the day they are due, they won't be counted as late. And some things you can't turn in late, like quizzes and reading questions, you can't turn in late. Labs, I will allow you to turn in late, and on the syllabus you'll get more information, but there'll be deduction in points if they're turned in late, and that will really start to impact your grade. So you don't want to turn anything in late. Some things you can't, and you really don't want to, okay? So we've got all the weeks. We've got a spring break. You can use this and refer to this. It'll be up all semester as we go through for you to keep track of what's due. 
In addition to this calendar, which you will be held accountable for, I'll post reminders for many things on Blackboard. And in addition, you have daily links folder. So these are still fairly empty. I'm still working on getting the material up, populating these. But for each of the units, you have a separate folder. This is just simply a reminder about when the exam is. I'll also post uh, a few days before the exam. I'll post an announcement on Blackboard so that you will be reminded of that. But if you click on the unit folder, in each of the units, you will have folders for each of the days posted on the calendar. And again, I'm still filling these out, populating these. So it's kind of sparse right now, but will be filled up throughout the semester. So for today, hopefully you're listening to this on Tuesday, January 12th. If not, that's okay. You're still, we're still, we don't have anything due this week until the quiz at the very end of the week. Uh, but if you click on this folder, you will have a list of things that should be done by that day. And again, some of them you can do a little bit later, but it's, it's advisable to try and make sure you are engaging and finishing them. It would be great if you can finish them by the date that they are listed uh, in this daily links folder. They're also listed by that same date on the calendar. Okay, so we've got a course orientation video, which is what you're watching right now. That's your first number one assignment, what you should do today. And for today, they're all videos, but other times they might be quizzes. They might be reading assignments. There'll be other things that are listed here that you should complete by that day. Your first video is just a brief introduction to the science of Evo Devo. There's another very short video about genes and how genes work. These are kind of introductory foundational videos. And then finally, genomes and transcriptomes. So you should watch these four videos, take some notes, go over them. If you have questions, then send me an email or even better yet, log on to an office hour. And so for each day uh, that's listed on the calendar, you will have a daily links folder with all of the things that you need to do. Reminders about taking quizzes, uh, reminders about the reading assignments, the reading questions and, and links to those to turning them in. Okay, your first assignment is not due until uh, Thursday, January 14th. There'll be a quiz. Each of the quizzes, if you go back and look at the calendar, we'll take a look at that. Each of the quizzes is just over that week's material. So the quiz that will be posted on, I'll try, probably post it on Wednesday, but it will be due by the end of the day on Friday. That quiz is just over this week's material. So everything that is in the um, Tuesday Daily Links folder and the Thursday Daily Links folder, that's all fair game for the quiz that week. Okay, So Daily Links and Calendar work together to help remind you and keep you current, make sure you're getting all of the material done. These other folders are resource folders. So PowerPoints up here. here. Uh, I'm a little slow to load right now, but... All of your PowerPoints, if you would like them, you don't need to use them. You can take notes on a sheet of paper, but some people like to print up an outline version of the PowerPoint. These are the PowerPoints that are there in those video lectures. SLOs are Word documents that are basically an outline of all of the major concepts for each of the units. So you can use them to help guide you through your notes. You can use them as a study resource for um, getting ready for the exam. So here are the PowerPoints for the first three lectures, uh, the things that are on Tuesday, January 12th. SLOs, uh, I'll just, these are posted online, but my connection's kind of slowed down here. So uh, you also have SLOs online. Here we are. Uh, again, these are Word documents. So you can use them, you can download them. Um, again, they're just going to walk you through step-by-step -step major concept, terms that you need to know, questions that you should be able to answer after you have gone through that material. So these are a guideline. They're, I think they're a useful guideline for, for most students to use to help them assess whether or not they're learning the material and then help them study and prepare for the exam. So let's take a look at one of these here. Oh, it's going to be a little while. We'll come back to it. All right. So uh, all of the extra reading assignments, the ones that are not from the textbook, are posted here in this folder. You can access them here. You can also access them. There'll be links to those that are posted in the uh, each of the daily links folder. Oh, so here's our first SLO. So you need to know definitions that are, in, are of terms that are in bold. I'll add to this a little bit because I actually have some more information about transcripts and transcriptomes that I need to add to this one. 
but you've got a step-by-step -step, you know, uh, uh, list of questions, and if you are uncertain about them, um, then you will uh, be able to go back to your book, go back to your notes, or log on to office hours and contact me, and we can clear up any uh, things, you know, gaps of, of, of your understanding. So use those SLOs as you're reviewing the material, particularly as you're getting ready for exams. Uh, again, all the readings will appear here, but links will be in the um, daily links folder to those readings also. When quizzes are available, I will post them here. That's this, this is the folder you'll use to access the quizzes with reminders being posted in both the course announcements and the daily links folder. Same thing for exams. I'll post announcements. Uh, the reminders are there in the daily links folder, um, but you will uh, click on this one uh, during the day uh, to take the exam and actually access it. Um, the first quiz you'll be able to take as many times as you want. That's kind of to get you familiar with the format. The first exam will be nearly identical in format. The length is different, but the format will be much the same as the quizzes. So if you're, the quizzes will help you get ready and prepared you know, with how you're going to log on, interact, and, and what to expect for the online version of the exams. All the lab material will appear in here. There are folders there already. The folders are empty, but I'll be populating those as I develop the labs. So that's all of the material, how you access it, how what to expect from this course. If you have any additional questions, please make an appointment with me, send me an email, log on to an office hour so you can go over and clear up any of those. My goal is to make everything kind of very accessible, uh, lots of reminders. I tend to be a little bit maybe over of a helicopter professor, I guess, uh, over reminding. But I think that's good. Um, but you are held for all of the deadlines, everything on the calendar. You'll get multiple reminders on Blackboard and the daily links folder and announcements to help you maintain um, and keep up with the course. If you fall behind, uh, it's, you're not going to do as well and you won't learn the material as well as you would have if you keep everything up and, and um, stay uh, current with the course.